Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan Ki and in the previous class we have discussed about the parts of the pars dorsalis which included the metathalamus and the epithalamus and after finishing that we are moving on to the pars ventralis where we will be discussing about two structures today that is the subthalamus and the hypothalamus. So the subthalamus is a small nucleus in the ventral part of the diencephalon and it looks like a biconvex lens in the coronal section. The location, it is located caudal to the lateral half of the thalamus and inframedial to the globus pallidus, while the subthalamus and the globus pallidus are interconnected by the subthalamic fasciculus which traverses the internal capsule. So here we have a representation where you can see the biconvex structure that is the subthalamus or the subthalamic nucleus which lies on laterally to the thalamus and inframedial to that of the lentiform nucleus and the lentiform nucleus is again having two parts the outer putamen and the inner globus pallidus so you can see how they are related and the internal capsule will be here and there exists a connection between the lentiform nucleus to be specific the globus pallidus and the subthalamus that will be traversing the internal capsule so that defines the subthalamus and the hypothalamus is a part of the diencephalon which lies below the thalamus as the name suggests hypo means below hypothalamus means below the thalamus and it forms the floor and the lower part of the lateral walls of the third ventricle and anatomically it is a very small in size weighing only 4 grams that is forming only 3.3 percent of the total brain mass. The boundaries of the hypothalamus anteriorly it is bounded by the lamina terminalis and posteriorly by the subthalamus and inferiorly by the structures on the floor of the third ventricle while superiorly it is bounded by the thalamus, laterally by the internal capsule and medially by the cavity of the third ventricle. So these are the boundaries of the hypothalamus you have to remember. You can see the boundaries here, anteriorly you can see the lamina terminalis, then medially you can see the third ventricle wall, this is the hypothalamus region, below the hypothalamic sulcus here will be the thalamus that is superiorly coming over the hypothalamus then you can see here there is a conjunction that is nothing but the optic chiasma okay so this represents the boundaries of the hypothalamus so I repeat anteriorly by the lamina terminalis posteriorly by the subthalamus and inferiorly by the structures on the floor of the third ventricle then superiorly the thalamus laterally the internal capsule and medially by the cavity of the third ventricle. So this defines the boundaries. The subdivisions of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is divided from medial to lateral side into three zones. They are the periventricular zone, the intermediate zone and the lateral zone. Where the periventricular and the intermediate zones together they are known as the medial zone. So you can see the hypothalamus is divided from medial to lateral into grossly two zones that is the medial zone and the lateral zone while the medial zone is subdivided into periventricular zone and the intermediate zone. And androposteriorly the hypothalamus is again divided into four zones that is the preoptic region, supraoptic region tuberal region and the mammillary region. So the preoptic region adjoins the lamina terminalis. We have seen what is lamina terminalis and uh, preoptic region adjoins that and the supraoptic region it is placed above the optic chiasma. I have shown you what is optic chiasma. Above that is the supraoptic region. Then the tuberal region and the mammillary region where the mammillary body and the area around it is termed as a mammillary region. And the hypothalamic region and the nuclei present in them. 
So you have to remember these names of the nuclei. It's very easy to remember because it has some relation to that of the region itself. So the preoptic region consists of the preoptic nucleus. The supraoptic region consists of supraoptic nucleus, anterior nucleus, and the paraventricular nucleus. While the tubular region consists of the acute nucleus, the ventromedial nucleus, and the dorsomedial nucleus. And the mammillary region, it is consisting of mammillary nuclei and the posterior nuclei. So these are the nuclei which you have to remember in the hypothalamic region. So here we have a representation of the same. Where you can see all the nuclei in detail. You can see the paraventricular nuclei. You can see the dorsomedial nuclei. You can see the posterior nuclei here. The mammillary nuclei here. Then I will be zooming in. You can see the nuclei in detail here. So you can just draw a zoomed version of this picture also. Where you can see the paraventricular nucleus. You can see the anterior nucleus. You can see the preoptic nucleus which is represented by the green color. Which adjoins the lamina terminalis. Then you can see the supraoptic nucleus which is above the optic asthma then you can see the arcuate nucleus you can see the mammillary nucleus and the ventromedial nucleus here so these are the nuclei which you have to remember under the hypothalamus the connections of the hypothalamus the afferents or the receiving impulses or like uh, the connections that comes into the hypothalamus are called as afferents and the afferents are the fornix which connects it to the hippocampus then the thalamo hypothalamic pathway which having a connection between the thalamus and the hypothalamus then the pallido hypothalamic pathway which connects with the corpus striatum and the efferents include the mammalothalamic tract and the descending fibers to the brainstem and the spinal cord the functions of the hypothalamus includes the autonomic control where the hypothalamus is having an anterior part and a posterior part. The anterior part is responsible for the parasympathetic nervous system actions and the posterior part controls the sympathetic nervous system. So that is an important function of the hypothalamus you have to remember. Then the neurosecretion that is the second function which includes the secretion of oxytocin and vasopressin. Then the regulation of food and water intake. It regulates the satiety center and all. So whatever food we eat, the feeling of satisfaction and the feeling of uh, like the thirst getting diminished, all this are controlled by the hypothalamus. Then the regulation of sexual behavior and reproduction, the temperature regulation of the body and the circadian rhythm maintenance, circadian rhythm means the cyclical changes that are happening over the daytime and nighttime in the body that is a rhythmic process so that is also controlled or overviewed by the hypothalamus so these are the functions related to the hypothalamus thank you